ITR boxing. You heard it here first. Pretty cool videos. And I heard they're also in HD. ITRboxing.com. So you moved this camp to Big Bear. Um, Suseido once trained in Big Bear. Uh, is there any, I don't know, like, is there any feeling or vibe psychologically you feel you get from that? Or you just had, did you have that mellow camp we had talked about earlier where you wanted to go fishing and uh, no, nah, yeah, we. I just had a, I had a chill camp, you know, um, a tough camp, you know. It was like, you know, Sacero trained up there, like you said, so he knows how, how how it is to train up there. You know, it's like, you know, you 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 get up, you run, go to the gym, stretch, do abs, you know, and then you go go back to your cabin, you eat, you go to sleep, you wake up, you go back to the gym, you go back to the cabin, you eat, and then you do it repeated and every day, you know, so. So it, it, it's tough, you know, like uh, during the weekend, you know, my days off were, were Saturday after training and I had Sunday off. So I'll just go fishing and stuff like that, you know. So, um, but, but yeah, it was, it was a definitely a, a good camp, tough camp, but it was a, ne a necessary camp. Yeah. And uh, I was listening to the conference call or whatever you were on. And I hear a lot of people talking about like the future with you. And I liked how you answered it because this is the biggest fight of your career. This is the fight you've been wanting the fight against someone people have heard of. You thought it might've been Alvarado, but Suseido's a name. This is a guy that fought for a world title. I liked how focused you are on the goal right now. Yeah, man. You know, um, you, you, you look at, uh, you know, uh, I hate, I hate when people ask about the future, you know, and like, I don't mean, I don't know what the future holds. You know what I mean? Like, all I, all I can control is on, uh, what, what I can do on Saturday, you know, what I train for Saturday. Like, I didn't train for the future. I didn't train for, you know, for, for you know, for for the fights after this, you know, because if I don't beat Salcedo, there's no fight after this, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to have to go back in line, you know, and work my way up again, you know. So so I'm I'm just focused on this fight, man. You know, uh, this, is, this is something that I wanted, like you said, and, and this is something that, that I got. You know, uh, this fight was already you know, uh, uh, agreed to before, uh, before the Tony Lewis fight, which I didn't know, you know, once I beat Tony Lewis, um, I, Bob Aaron came up to me and said, all right, see the 17th. And everyone's telling me the 17th Salcedo. And I'm just like, okay. You know, so I was like, all right, cool. So, uh, yeah, man, just, uh, I'm happy, you know, I'm happy. This is the fight I wanted, like you said, and, uh, it's a good name. And I want to also do some more talking about how, how good of a fighter you are, because that's part of what this is just putting you over is, you consistently improve like you really do you, like from where you began to the beginning because you you started on bash boxing cards and now you're fighting in a co-main event of possibly the biggest fight of the year yeah man you know um uh, i don't think people, people understand the the struggle you know um that that i went through you know like i had no like really not a big amateur career um, I went like a whole year and a half without fighting, you know, because I couldn't get a promoter to, to get a look at me. And then, you know, I sparred Mike Alvarado when he fought Marquez. Um, they, they, and and um, Alvarado's manager at the time uh, put a word in for me at top rank, said, hey, this kid's good. You should look at him. And I went I went to the to, to the to the fights. You know, I got tickets for the fight and I met Brad and then it was all from there. So I had to literally start in the Unimas fights, like you said sell tickets you know i had to uh, hustle and that's why you know uh um this opportunity means a lot to me uh, but you know i'm not i'm not just happy to be here you know the, the, i think a lot of fighters get content with just being the under being the co-main and on a lomachenko card and they get they get caught up in that and they feel like they made it but not me you know i just feel like you know i i, I want to be a headliner you know i want to i want to uh, get farther i want to be a champion so i gotta go through this yeah, because I mean, I look at you and it's obvious, and I this is just what I feel. Taylor and Ramirez are moving up. They're going to fight and they're not going to stay. You feel like the guy that's going to take over the division if you do what you're supposed to do, if you live up to the way you've been progressing. Um, I guess what I'm saying is after not the future, but how do you look at your division right now? Because I feel like all fighters look at the division. Oh man, it, it's stacked. It's <laughs> super stacked. I think I think the one uh one forties is probably one of the most stacked divisions, man. Uh, you know, you look at you look at fighters, you know, like like uh like Pedraza, he looked really good, man, against Molina. He made Molina look average and Molina's a great, great fighter. You know, uh you look at Cepeda, you know, who was a good friend of mine, you know, like we're good friends, you know, and I'm happy for him, you know, and he made a statement, you know, his fight, you know, so 
so you look at those two guys and then you have uh, Mario Barrios, of course, you know, um, also, you know, who doesn't get a lot of recognition as well. But we look at you look at the division, man, the next in line and, and, and they're stacked, you know. So I feel like Cepeda passed his test. Uh, Pedraza passed his test. And now it's my turn to pass my test. And uh, the way I think the wonder means Salcedo will get a title shot. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's uh, pretty pretty clear and I think that you've earned it and I think that a lot of people have missed out on a lot of your performances because you're you're really stepping up in these performances as always uh, I got to ask you about snack products you've always been a big supporter of snack talk a little bit about how that's played in your train camp uh you know what man I, I started taking snack I believe it was my um I think after my 18th fight I think or 17th fight Oh, man, I swear, uh, ever since I've been taking snack, man, my, that's when my performances have been uh, changing, man. You know, uh, um, it, they, you know, I, I make sure I take it every day. You know, I'm on point with my snack products, man. I take it the same time every day. The same, I, I do the same. I don't, I don't mess around with snack, man. It's, it, to me, it's the one of the best. I've never taken supplements in my, in my whole boxing career, you know. And when I started taking snack, man, I just felt my body changing. Like I felt my improvement on everything, every aspect, my stamina, everything, man. So, so big shout out to snack, man, Victor Conti and the whole team, man, they've been treating me really good. You know, um, everything I need, they send it right away. Uh, no problem. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad I'm a snack fighter and I'm, I keep hoping to make them proud. Okay. I gotta ask you some football questions. Why can't Derek Carr read man to zone coverage? Like, man, like... <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. You know what? Like, like, like he's a, you know what? He's a, he's a decent quarterback compared to some quarterbacks in the league. But, but you know, I just think ever since he broke he broke his leg, you know, that one time before the playoffs, I just feel like he's too he's too scared. You know, like they touch him, and he's like, oh, he fumbles the ball. You know, like he, like once he feels a little pressure, he starts he starts panicking right away. You know, um, but you know, hey, the Raiders beat the Chiefs, man. So I mean, I know that's only one game, but if they, if, you know, there's they could have beat the Bills. You know, um, so so I mean. Hey, you never know. I mean, maybe the Raiders are, are uh, catching momentum right now. Well, I mean, you guys have a way better team than my Niners because we love doing jet sweeps and having guys – we have, like, tight end throwing the football down the field. We're having guys line up in motions that they've never done. It's As a Niners fan, it's like right now I'm, like, turning to new sports because it just – Yeah, but, but I mean, you guys, you guys have a lot of injuries, man. You guys have probably, like, the most injured team out there right now. You guys have – well, at one point you guys were – you guys had a bunch of injuries. I just so, hate, I, I hate our coach. Like I, I'm an old school guy. I like I formation shotgun. When, we, when you have like guys lined up and they're moving around and you look at the players, I've been around sports my whole life and they look confused. I don't like that look. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just like, it, I mean, I guess they're trying to like, everyone's trying to do a, a new thing. You know what I mean? Like everyone's always trying to do something new that, that's going to shock and, and, you know, but I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe San Fran is a new coach, man. That, that, I've been saying that. Thank you for that's why that's why I'm picking you to win this weekend because you agree with me on stuff. Tell, give us just a tiny insight. Obviously, like your camp was the best camp ever and all that stuff. But who was a part of your camp and um, just like kind of give props to the people that really put in time and invested into this fight camp for you. Oh, man. Um, you know, I had my dad, of course, you know, he's my trainer. Um, he I felt bad, you know, because he had to go up there. For one week, he had to go up there driving every day up and down because he had to go to work. So he would drive up there every day. Um, he would he would eat and then he would come back down. They had to wake up and go to work like at five in the morning. So you know, and then I had my my you know mother coach up there when Chewy was also my cut man. He was up there with us, and then I took my sparring partners up there. You know, shout out to Michael Dutch over uh, Ruben Torres. I had Feliciano going up there as well. Luis Feliciano um, going up there and sparring. So. So it was, I mean, it wasn't, it was a cool camp, man, because those dudes were staying with me in the cabin. So it was, it was fun, man, play Madden and, you know, you know, BS a lot of times. So it, it was a cool camp, man. Madden rating rankings. Who's the best at Madden? Who's the worst at Madden? I want to know. Ah, come on, man. I'm the best at Madden. Come on now. Who uses Ask Madden only for their play calling? Not me. Not me. <laughs> not that much. So I, I, I get those user picks and I get those fumbles, man, those hit sticks. You get the hit sticks. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to you. I won't take that much more of your time because I know you're a, uh, not just a boxer. You're also a family man. You have a lot of things 
And I'm just, as someone that uh, believes in you, I'm excited to see you be on a very big stage and perform because I, I've saw I've seen you in person since Max Bracera. I think that's the first ever interview I oh, did. Yeah. You were at where, where was that Burbank? In yeah, yeah, like, it was at Burbank. Yeah, it was a hell of a fight too. Yeah, that. it was a it was a tough fight, you know. And I I met you there, and it's like it's cool to see you go from the Burbank thing where there was probably a big big fight, and most people were there, and there was like what four or five hundred people. You have to sell tickets. So now you're fighting on one of the biggest cards possibly in the history of boxing for the next five years. And you're the co-main event. Yeah, man, I'm excited, you know, but like I said, you know, I'm not just happy to be there. I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over there to take care of business. And you have a real chance. I'll stress this to people. You have a real chance to be the best 140 pounder in the world. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. After this fight, I hope uh, I'm going to show something different. So I hope uh, everyone uh, tunes in, man. Catch, catch, catch this fight. I think that I'm going to see some southpaw action. That's that's my guess is that I might see a little southpaw action. That's just my. Don't you don't know that, but um. Nah, man, I don't, I, I got to stay righty on this one. You got to stay righty yeah. on this one, but um, where yeah. can people follow you on social media? Because I feel like after this fight, people are definitely going to want to see you, um, follow you and stay up to date with all your training. Yeah, man, uh, you can, they can follow me on Twitter at uh, Junior Barboza Arnold or on Instagram at Arnold underscore uh, Barboza underscore Junior. And, uh, man, follow me, man. Let's, let's start. Let's get this, man. Road to the championship. And I can't emphasize this enough. One of the most focused, determined, hardworking boxers in the game, October 17th, ESPN co-main event. How good does that feel to say co-main event? Feels Obviously, good, man. Feels good, but you're not – you want – you're feel, not feel just better. there. Feels a champion. It was a champion. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, Almost well, there. Feels good, I, though. I look forward to seeing this fight, and I look forward to seeing you fight for a world title within the next year. Thank you, man. I appreciate you, Luke. Hey, shout out to Snack, man. Tyree, when I say what up up there.